Hey guys, this week's intro is brought to you by the Thursday Throwdown that never was. We managed to save this audio from the video that completely crashed and did not work. So I hope you enjoy this. But before we start, I did want to sing a little song. Are you really? Yeah, so I've got uh, Steam pulled up here. It's got uh, Calder's profile. Uh, showing some Team Fortress 2. <laughs> So the song is called uh, 90,420 Minutes. It goes like this. 90,420 Minutes. That's how many minutes Calder's play Team Fortress. <laughs> as a spy, as a scout, I can look at it all. <laughs> so much crap. <laughs> Uh, it does say, like, if I click on it, it does go into, like, detail, so I can... 90,420 minutes. That's how many minutes I'll just play this game. Uh, where's that? Where's that? Uh, uh. <laughs> hey, man, it's free. You should play sometime. I really should. It's fun, man. I've, I, mean, I love... I've, I've watched plenty of, uh videos and stuff of it so it's like i'm obviously biased at how fun i think oh, this game oh, is here we go. so it goes 90,420 <laughs> minutes that's how many minutes college played team fortress to 85.2 hours as the engineer uh 57.1 hours as the soldier Guess Calder doesn't like the meta because he spent less than 15 hours playing <laughs> as it. Uh, all right, that's the end of the song. Uh, I'm sorry, everyone. I'm truly sorry uh, uh, if I end up leaving this one. Uh, it's my favorite game, man. Leave me be. Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This is episode 321. We're going to talk about our recent Kilted Classic uh, tournament games we played. So we're going to do a little bit of final thoughts on the Fantastic Four set and then cover some news in the form of Rock Prizing and the Road to Worlds. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. <laughs> Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me in the studio, like always, is my nemesis, Simeon Burrs. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, uh, you know, I'm in a flash flood warning for the next 12 hours, so right. Noah, get the boat. I'm ready to be taken for a ride. And then just Jim Carrey shows up with like a really sh very like sh shakily CGI beard or whatever he had in that movie. All right, sweet. We are going to the bit failed, so we're moving on very quickly from it. It was not funny, and it's, we're going past it. Uh, we like to start off every week with what made us happy, besides the flash flood and maybe getting a little little swimming going on in your summer. What else made you happy this week, Simeon? What made me happy this week, uh, not a big, great week, not a whole lot going on. So it was simply the fact that I got some Fantastic Four boosters. I opened up what I determined to be a uh, an adequate amount. Um, I wasn't going overboard, bought less than a case. Still got like some figures that I really like. Um, got enough figures to trade and enough figures to give away. Boy, oh boy, do I have enough rare read rare Reed Richards. I got as many rare hmm. Reed Richards as I did common Reed Richards, which I think is like, I don't, I don't know. I think that's just a terrible thing. thing. I, I was going to, I was going to say something, but I, I decided to, to hold my tongue because, uh, it's, it's just not that great of a figure. Like he's the rare Reed. Not, I'm not talking about the doctor. Fantastic. I'm talking about the I was rare. About to say, you better Richards. watch your mouth. The Rare Reed Richards gives uh, Fantastic Four characters within, like, four squares leadership. And then he's got Outwit with a range of ten that's protected Outwit. And then the rest of his stuff doesn't really matter. He's a cool figure. I like him. I don't need six. I just don't. I'll never use really cool more than many. one. Uh, but, what? yeah, what made me happy was 
also getting all my generics. They really did a in my my experience, they did a really good job filling out this set with generics where um after opening up like a sealed brick, I had plenty of like plenty of moloids, plenty of doom bots. Uh didn't get a ton of the punishers, but I wasn't really looking for them. And then what's the other one? The scrolls. I got like a handful of oh, yeah. scrolls. So there's like three scroll generics though, which yeah, is cool. One of them's rare, which I I always hate pulling a rare generic like that. I always feel like they should be left to common and uncommon. Um, but yeah, it's fine. Sure. Yeah, man. Fantastic four set made you happy. I like the distribution as well, but we'll we'll get into that uh, in our little F four final thoughts set review. What made me happy this week? It has been a terrible week. This is like a 2020 week in a nutshell. My air conditioner doesn't work. I've unplugged my fan. So my goal for this episode is to like lose. See if we pounds. can get the episode. Yeah, see if we can get through the episode before. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't want to lose 12 pounds. Uh, if we can get through the episode before I die of like heat stroke in my 80, 85 degree apartment right now because it is not cooling off. The AC does not work. And I got to turn the fan off, otherwise it's going to have awful audio. But what made me happy this week was yesterday was it was also kind of bad. I ate an entire tube of just raw cookie dough. It was oh just like one of, one, of, <laughs> one of those. That didn't make me happy. But it was like that was like the mood for that day, just to let you know. And then I'm sitting in bed at like 1130, and I'm just like, I'm not tired. What am I doing? You know, and I go into my living room, I boot up the little PS1, and I just finish Metal Gear Solid. And that's what made me happy this week, was just finally finishing Metal Gear Solid. It's like, uh, I think we mentioned this almost last year around this time is when I started playing it. And, and I finally just went through and finished it. I thought I was more than halfway through the game. That was false. I started at about 11.45, and I finished the game close to 4 a.m. Yeah. So Nowhere near surprisingly as large close game. to done. Yeah, as close to done. The amount of exposition that Liquid gives you after you beat the Metal Gear Rex is stupid. It's so dumb. There's all this like world building, and I'm like, dude, I don't care. I don't, I don't care. I don't I destroyed your robot. Let's move on. And then there's like another boss fight after it, and I already had to fight like the robot a million times because I kept dying. And when you die, you have to fight the first stage and the second stage, which is awful game design, Kojima. I hate it, um, but whatever. I can't save in between stages. Like, are you, are you serious? Anyways, but I, I love that I just finished Metal Gear Solid 1. It's a cool series, cool characters. That's what made me happy this week. Yeah. All right. We're going to jump into the news. from The Rock and news from WizKids. Let's do some WizKids news first. So they have a Road to Worlds article. This is up in the air right now. So that's kind of what this whole thing is about. So it says, Hello, here clicks Dice Masters and Star Trek Attack Wing players. We are looking to gauge interest in attendance for a WizKids World Championship event at, of course, again, Graceland in October. So that's Memphis, Tennessee, October 9th through the 11th. Please follow this link for a brief survey. The survey is two questions very very simple i actually clicked on the image and just like blew up the image on my computer instead of like the survey so uh given the current uh trigger word uh ts19 i'm not going to say the actual one but ts19 environment we are trying to gauge interest in attendance for a WizKids world championship event at graceland in october uh, following the current safety policies from graceland and the shelby county health I guess that's the county that Memphis, this part of Memphis is in. Uh, anyway, safety protocols may include mask requirements, temp- temperature, goodness gracious, I can't say words, temperature checks, uh, socially distanced tournament area. Don't know how that's going to work. Uh, two players max at a spaced table if possible. With the amount of people that showed up last year, uh, they better have quadruple the amount of seating they had from last year if they're going to make think a two player max that's tables possible. if possible. Um, I think it's very think possible so. because. Uh, need another room. I feel yeah, like, for those that least. weren't there, it was a convention hall, and it's one of those convention halls that is separated by a giant, uh, like fabric wall. Not fabric. It's like foldy screen. Yeah, gears those like things, they're, right? Like they're it's... solid walls, but they are very much like movable. The thinnest of solids that they could yeah. be, and then and yeah, they like collapse and stuff. I th- I didn't go into the other side, but I'm pretty sure last year they were just using the other side for 
storage uh, for like WizKids was just using it for storing uh, convention exclusives and stuff that weren't like out on the tables displayed. So I'm pretty sure that they could open that up and almost double their space, which and they could also just be like, hey, attack wing, uh, don't bother. You don't get any tables Dude, this year. There was three of you. you. Yeah. There like, was three of you. We don't need the three of you to come back to determine who the world champion of Attack Wing is. Uh, Dice Master, <laughs> sure. You can come and roll your dice. There was like I don't 20, even know 50, what your game I think. is. Maybe 50, yeah. 20 something. There's dice definitely masters. more Dice Masters than I thought because my area, it's kind of dead. Yeah. Uh, but it's definitely still going strong. They're still making new sets and stuff. Uh, but nowhere near as sad and depressing as the attack wing tables were. Uh, just, bad. Just, just looking at it and seeing like the WizKids employees sit there being like, please, someone play attack wing. Oh, yeah. no. Come on. <laughs> it's so sad. What's the worst so part anyways. Is, like, I could have probably gone knowing almost nothing about the game. And if not, like one, I could have been like, yeah, I got third and attack wing worlds and all i would have had to do is sign up <laughs> like that but i could yeah. put that on my resume i was the th- i would i got third place in attack wing worlds place man uh, all right yeah, uh so they also saying uh alternate two-player sealed quick play format with con lb prizing in place of battle royales as to avoid the past draft format this is kind of neat yeah, alternative fair. two-player sealed uh, I'm curious how that would work. I mean, obviously, is it just like a two-player sealed game where I open a booster, you open a booster, and like, is that it? Do we also, if this was like, like, I don't know what set they're going to be using for Worlds if they, like this happens, but if this was X Men Dark Phoenix, I wouldn't sign up for any of those because like the chances of you pulling the uncommon like plain Sentinel and like a garbage like Avalanche is your your rare, oh. and then your opponent pulls like 300 point Red Skull or like Dark Phoenix or like whatever. I- you know it's probably going to be either the new X-Men set or the Spider-Man set. I'd imagine the Spider-Man set coming out in September would be it. Um, And then enhanced digital slash online tournament reporting and sales as to limit the passing of paper, cash, credit cards, whatever. So, like... I'm just going to keep reading, then I'll get final thoughts. I'm going to read the whole thing. Uh, as we had last year, we also planned for a room, bro- room block at the guest house at Graceland, uh, $159 a night, and a TCB package, including a tour pass, quick play voucher, and some convention LEs. With the above in mind, please let us know if you would make plans to attend. If so, your anticipated me- method of travel. So first question is, how likely are you to attend? Definitely not going, leaning towards not going, leaning towards going, or definitely going. Um, the next one is, how are you going to travel? Air travel or driving? And then other. So if you are taking <laughs> something besides plus. driving or air travel, submarine. or maybe you're like, yeah, submarine to Memphis. I don't you're know. Um, like Elon Musk, and you're going to get shot into space <laughs> and then shot back down towards Graceland. And just like explode so, through the roof like some sort of superhero. I, I answered, to, to spoil my, my survey here, I answered that, yes, I would absolutely go if it was held. Don't care. And I said other only because I might fly or I might drive because I had a plane ticket earlier this year that I couldn't get refunded. So I have like $280 worth of, yeah, back when flights were that much, uh, $280 of just like a plane thing that I need to use in a year. Otherwise it's like a free donation to Delta apparently. Like that's just what's going to happen, which sucks. So I might just fly. That's, that's how I answered. I might drive on my flight. So, honestly, Simi, what do you think about this whole, personally? Uh, personally? So, yeah, per- because, personal we, thought because we do this podcast the and we, we yeah. try and bring you guys news, um, I also like to, like, show up and, you know, shake hands, uh, tap elbows as it will be policy. There, there you go. Um, I was about to just I like to I like to meet and greet right. all the people that... Uh, hate me because no one's a fan of mine. Um, but true. <laughs> but uh, I, I filled out the survey. I said, I'll be definitely going if they're holding it, I'll be there. I won't miss it for the, the world of uh, was, uh, hero clicks. Um, it's a good joke. Um, I'll do air fly. Like I'll do, I'll do plane. I'll do fly, fly plane. Uh, the, the air flying thing. Um, just because make us sound too smart. All right. Yeah. Slow down. <laughs> just because, uh, I think it's actually like just as, just as, uh, 
dangerous to fly as it would be to ride in a car for like 16 hours or whatever the yeah. time would be for me. And if I do decide to go, like if they are holding it and I'm like, yep, doing it, definitely doing it. I'll probably just go and like get like a like respirator mask from like an actual uh, filtration like mask. I'll go like the whole nine yards with like my uh, what is what is that called? The the thing that people install uh, drywall. I'll get like a drywall mask. Yeah, there you go. Sure. Um, hey man, that's cool. Yeah, that's. That's absolutely what I would do if they have it. But another thought I had is like, hey, how is the time? Maybe not really. I don't know. Depending on stores. But stores are opening it back up. States tournaments are, be- are being played. Local tournaments are being played. And, you know, um, uh, bring back con in, con in your store. That's if what anyone's ever shown up to a tournament uh, with Edward Shelton playing, um, that guy takes health seriously. Like. Does. He's come in with like masks before when he's got like a slight cold or he just feels a little under the weather. Uh, he'll like be like, I can't shake your hand right now, man. Like good game, but like I can't shake your hand because I think I might have a cold coming on. That guy takes it seriously and he's been doing this for like, I mean, since I've been showing up to tournaments. So at least three years uh, I've known him to like do that. And if he was doing mm-hmm. it before this, like, I mean, the least you can do is do it now. Like, I don't know. Take a cue from a, a veteran player. I think he's in the Hall of Fame. It's a Dark Logos starting over podcast on just YouTube. I I think. Yeah. I can't remember. I think it is just YouTube. But yeah, uh, good guy. I, yeah. I love me some Ed. Love me some Ed Shelley. Uh, <laughs> don't call him that. I never never once called him that in my entire life. Don't know why I said it. Anyways, uh, but yeah, you know, if you do feel sick, obviously don't go and stuff like that, or be as like protective and cautious as possible. I, I still think I know Con in Your Store like failed. I didn't do a podcast. I wasn't active in the community when Con in Your Store was a thing. But I remember thinking, wow, for the once every three months, I might drive out to where the store is, like the closest one near me. I uh, I hope they do Con in Your Store. And they did one month, and we just did Battle Royales. Like that was literally the format for that whole night. And uh, they plopped down a, a Cap Sentinel, and I'm just like, all right, uh, let's win this baby. And I didn't win it <laughs> at all. But uh, at the end of it, they had an extra cap sentinel, and the guy just like chucked it to me, and I was like, "Nice." So yeah. I like, it's like that's like still like the cap sentinel I, I own to this day. Like, I think Con in Your Store was cool, just for at least that one point in time where I got it. And Con in Your Store was based on how much trash hero clicks you could sell. I believe it was like how much of the kick arse set you can sell. Lord of the Rings, like Iron Man uh, main set, but like the Gravity Feed Iron Man set from 2013. Like, oh, yeah, um, yeah. what was it? Teen Titans. It was it was all based on like how much trash hero clicks that you would order and get rid of. Would they give you good uh, convention exclusives, basically? Um, and that would be my one. And I don't really think there's any this. total trash. Yeah. Uh, for like, if they had had... So it was a two-question survey. It literally... And this this annoyed me a little bit. It literally took you less time to fill out this survey than it did to type in a response, yes, I'll be going. Sorry, can't make it this year. Like, whatever your response was, it literally took you less time to fill out the survey and give WizKids actual yeah. survey results than it did to comment, yet people still commented. Um, my one gripe is if they had added an option like like a third question that was like if you can't attend worlds or like you don't like feel safe to attend worlds would you prefer con in your store or do you think right. like, blah, 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 this or that? i would have uh, really liked them to have like a question like that or, or like you know uh maybe we'll update our convention of vault if like enough people vote because this literally does i mean i have no idea what information they're getting from this other than a generic like idea of how many people could come um because i imagine more or less all the same people that went last year are gonna want to go go this year yeah maybe take off i don't think like that's... max 20 people might not go because of like this, but i think all the same people that went last year will want to go this year yeah let's be yeah. let's be honest the real barrier of entry for worlds is the cost and time that it takes to go yeah. it is not like the health risks um, yeah, it, it, it probably no is flag. for a few people, but the majority of people, the real uh, 
like barrier is going to be like the cost of getting to Memphis, staying somewhere for three nights, uh, and getting mm-hmm. back, and like missing work for four, potentially five days. Yeah. Oh, all right, that's Worlds. I don't want to talk about it too much. We're kind of running long here. I'm gonna just gonna go do a quick read about the Realms Open Championship, the I Want to Rock Rock uh, tournament, the Nats tournament they're gonna be doing. They finally announced their prizing yesterday, and let's just get right into it. So it's like thirty dollars, I believe, thirty thirty five bucks for either singles, which is just yeah. three hundred modern, thirty for singles, or their ninety hyper, for a team, then ninety for a team of three people. So. Uh, teams is going to be crazy highlander 300 modern which is if i have something on my team you can't have it on your team it's very simple understand so physical prizing is cumulative prizing may be increased dependent upon entries so those are just two little caveats there just so you know this is going to be singles prizing so the the winner the number one guy get a plaque trophy will be able to design a map for the rock cup 2021 uh. he gets a championship rock map Wow. He'll get an entire Justice League Unlimited factory set, which is okay. pretty cool. Fair. And 300 Fair. WKO points. Yeah, I, I think the uh, sets League that come out, is... obviously, F4 is too new. Yeah. And the Justice League set, it might honestly be a better... I think it's a better full set than oh, yeah, F4. Yeah. I would 100%. rather win a Justice League set than um, None F4 of the chases sure. from Justice League... The chases way are, better. Yeah, they're, they're not the same like caliber as God Doom. Yeah. But... Uh, let's say you already have, like, let's be honest, if you're winning the 300 modern singles event, you probably, probably already have um, most of Justice League Unlimited. You probably already have at least one Brainiac. Um, let's be real, it, it costs money to win this game, uh, or at least you have to borrow something. So you probably won't be, like, you won't probably won't be keeping most of the Justice League uh, set that they give you. And it's also going to come with 120 team up cards. And when that's the big, when the, the average big team that, up card yeah. is going for five, yeah, that's that's five hundred and sixty dollars minimum. But the average card is you know five. But there's also some team up cards that are going for thirty. There's some more rare ones that are going for seventy five. There's you know there's people that are willing to pay like crazy prices because these are fairly rare mm-hmm. so when you get yeah. a full set you'll be getting all the team up cards i imagine uh, they did mention that team up cards would be prizing they just didn't know how and since they said it's a factory set i'm assuming whoever wins also gets that so just yes. on the surface i would hope so not even factoring any of the any of the figures in that's like a 500 hundred dollar prize just for the JLU starter. I'll, I'll go ahead and cut you off right here. We can't talk about team up cards anymore. We're not allowed to. So <laughs> let's just stop. Stop what we're ahead. Just yeah. can't. We can't talk about team up cards. Not allowed to, Simeon. Uh, uh, since other than, the, other than the Martian Manhunter flash card no, that actually costs you don't, $20 don't. to sell, don't. it will literally cost you money to get rid of it. Don't. Just don't. Don't start me with the, the Manhunter <laughs> man. All right. So I'm going to actually start from the bottom now that we read the the top, like the number one guy, because uh, all the prizing, you'll just keep getting it. And it's easier to explain if I go from the bottom to the top. So top 16 will get Exospecs, Proxima Midnight Spear, Corvus Glaive, all 10 Mandarin Rings, the rock map, whatever it is, uh, two Colossal Actual Tokens, those beautiful rock dice, 50 WKO points. Uh, next up, this is all, if you make top 16, you keep making, obviously, more if you get the top eight, the top yeah. whatever, right? But top so 16, top eight, getting... Uh, uh, gets, all 10 Mandarin rings isn't anything to sneeze at. Like, it's, those are good. still pretty solid. It's good. Let me read the prizes, Simeon. Let me read the prizes. <laughs> Let me get through them all. Let me get through them all. We'll do opinions. Let me get through them all. Jeez, gosh, I'm dying in here. I'm so hot. All right. Uh, top eight. Uh, we'll get 75 WKO points. Pixie, Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver, Deadpool the Duck, and con exclusive Marvel Hero Clicks Avengers 1 million BC Lady Phoenix. Sounds okay. Let's just read top four now. Uh, top four gets a snake draft of both JLU and Captain America and the Avengers Chase Prime sets and 100 WKO points. Top two gets a Just League Unlimited Chase Prime set, Captain America Chase Prime set, 150 WKO points. So if you win, if you win the whole thing, you get like all of those, right? So now you have uh, two Chase Prime sets of Just League Unlimited, a Chase Prime set of Captain America and the Avengers, some snake draft of JLU and Captain America and the Avengers. I don't Prime, know if they'll Prime include sets, first place in the snake draft. That seems, probably, probably not. That seems, seems like bad to, to like double dip them in. Yeah. But um, 
You never know. Uh, it's it's up to them to run, and they they'll run it however they want to run it. That's true. So yeah, now we can rewind. Let's talk about the the interesting things here. The very weird way of confirming because we didn't even know she was going to exist. Yeah, the no weird way to confirm other than the fact that it's a prize. no information at all. Yeah, of this 10 million BC phoenix, which everybody was like waiting and clamoring for her, which didn't show up in uh, XDPS. They're like, "Whoa, what's going on?" She's not in the X Men animated set. <laughs> I think it's because she has Avengers. Probably keyword. some people were probably relieved, and they were like, "We can't put it, it in the well X Men set." She's got the Avengers keyword. I'm like, give there was like a, a Red Skull yeah. in there. Maybe he's not an Avenger. I guess he's Hydra. I'm freaking out. But like, it's <laughs> yeah, just weird. True. It's weird. Very like, true. Yeah. Talking about Dude is like almost nothing to do with X Men besides the fact that he did take over Onslaught or whatever. Like Red Skull's like nothing to do with X Men besides like that one time. So this is just to me, it's such a weird way to con- number one confirm she exists because we know that Ares, John Cena, Invisible John Cena, and Ghost Rider, and I think a few Punisher, others, right? We Ghost knew Rider, those yeah. con exclusives existed, and we knew we were going to get them sometime. We never saw her sculpt. We never knew she existed. We thought, we just thought she was probably going to exist eventually. Yeah. This is just such a weird way to confirm it. And then, and then saying, Op 8 gets, gets her in this, in this tournament. Now, I'm going to go ahead and read. Is there anything else you want to say about how weird it was? Like, this is how we found out that Lady I Phoenix do want to say. It's so weird. To- so going by top eight and up, that means eight people get it, and that means uh, in teams, three. I I don't remember if it was top four in teams. I guess we can wait till we get there. But basically, there's going to be around like 32 people, uh, minus like judge prizing or whatever other ways that it leaks out. There's going to be basically about 32 people that have this figure until Worlds, mm-hmm. and. If, if Worlds is even held, um, assuming Worlds is held. So there's going to be like, uh, it's kind of like the Starro situation, how it got released overseas and like nationals before like the, the Worlds where people were buying it at Worlds. So there was like several tournaments that were being won with Starro while there was only like five in the US. And it'll be the same situation where this Phoenix will only be you know very very limited capacity so i imagine it's going to be going for quite a bit of money uh it's not something you'll be able to pick up easily until it's released later down the line because it's just going to be i i mean and this is assuming it's not just complete garbage i imagine that'll be pretty good sure but even if it is a absolutely terrible figure if it looks cool and it's a character people like like god doom he's terrible People are still going to spend too much money on him. Oh yeah, so it doesn't. It, it really doesn't matter. This she is going to be for like five hundred bucks, 400, 400, 500 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Like, like she's going to be expensive because people have been waiting forever to finish off their ten million, whatever, one million, whatever the freak. I don't know, a bunch of ones and zeros. Avengers BC, they're BC Avengers, and now there's only thirty two. There's literally a set number in existence. Uh, I don't know how many uh, uh, the Rock will get for like judge prizing and stuff like that, but like based on what we assume, what we know about top eights getting it, there's only going to be so many. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be the most expensive hero yeah. clicks figure. So I, th- I time. think, but that's how hero clicks work. As far as nationals goes, this nationals probably has the best top prizing, uh, just because of like the added stipulations that are in there. Like no other nationals where would you yeah. get a convention exclusive that was so rare that like other people wouldn't get it. Um, so yeah, like if, if you really need an, uh, a 10 million BC Phoenix lady, lady Phoenix, whatever, um, we haven't seen the dial or any information about it yet. We don't know if it's a two by two or a single base or a three by six. Heck, it could be uh, the entire map. It could just be the name of a map. Um, but (laughs) if you really need one, you're going to have to compete and win at least top eight in this, or you're going to have to shell out a lot of money. And that uh, doesn't matter because because David Newark will buy your soul. Will literally sell his soul for this phoenix. Like if she's a thousand dollars, he's there. He's like, all right, easy. Okay, fine. Thank you for the phoenix. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, right. So next up, let's do teams. Yeah, so I'll so technically only like thirty one in existence because he'll yes. own at least one. Yeah. David Newark will get one. Period. That is not not a question. Um, top sixteen in teams is the same as to- a top 16 in single. So it's Exospecs, Proxima Midnight Spear, Corvus's Glaive, 
uh, mansion rings, a rock map, two action tokens, colossal ones, but some rock dice, whatever. Liter- literal trash, rock dice, literal trash. I have not once seen, mini tangent, not once seen a human being be like, yes, my prestigious rock dice I got from top eight at rock states or like whatever. And like, those are their dice to use. Never once. Never I once. like them. I would they have not consider cool them designs sometimes, but I, with, I will yeah, never use the them tokens. above like my metal dice or my Captain America dice, like whatever. I, I like those because they literally have Captain America on them, right? Like they ha- they're cool colors. You know, I have some. Ro- I own a lot of rock dice, and I keep them specifically because they look really, really cool. But like, they're never my dice to roll with. They're always maybe counter tokens or something. But it's cool getting rock dice. You know, it's always par for the course. But anyways, I'm just like, I'm over them. I'm pretty you know, sure there's a time the, where I was like, the yeah, average dice I got roll dice for doing good in the tournament. Yeah, like an av- an average dice roll for a normal dice should be six or seven if you roll them enough. That should be what it averages out to. I'm almost certain that ROC dice average out to five. I think that's the typical ROC dice roll is five. I think that's probably also one of the biggest things. The rounded corners, I do not like the rounded corners whatsoever. I like I like my square dice. I don't like the rounded corners. Mm. I don't know if that affects it. They bounce more, for sure, on the neoprene maps. Oddly enough, the way the rock dice are made and then neoprene maps, they just don't work well together at all, which is ironic. But anyways, um, then top eight is the same thing again. Deadpool, Duck, Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch, Pixie, and the... BC Lady Phoenix. Top four gets a snake draft of JLU and Captain America chases, and only one of each chase prime sets provided to be split among all three team members. Oh, I didn't read that yeah. part. And only one of each chase prime sets provided to split among all also, three. Team is members. the snake draft like snaking three, or is it like your whole team gets to pick one? That's what I was trying to like figure out. I don't. I, I mean, don't yeah, they didn't do a ton of like explanation on that. A snake draft for teams seems very strange, um, yes. because like you're all paying the same entry. You're hopefully all pulling the same amount of weight. I can't imagine doing a snake draft and being like, "Oh man, like I really don't have that figure, but I'd really like it." And then your friends like, "Yeah, okay, well it's our turn. I'll pick it." And then I guess we can share it on weekends. Like that just. <laughs> seems so bad hopefully it's, it's like you're weird. somehow snake drafting three chase sets but i don't know and then top two gets just league unlimited chase prime set captain america chase prime set and then i i hope that as each member of the team gets a chase prime set i hope they don't have to split it up like that's so weird and then the winner gets the same thing plaque trophy design a map i'm um, just the unlimited factory set uh championship rock map they they did the Star Trek sets last year, and each member of the team got a full set of the Star Trek, right. uh, whatever gravity feed it was. So I imagine each member of the team will get a Captain America Justice League Unlimited Chase Prime set. Each member of the team will get a Justice League Unlimited Factory yeah. set. So if not, teams is the thing uh, to win, sure. Just because like all that prizing going around. I mean, it's the and same also, as single. it's costing singles, you technically. Triple what singles is. it is, but it's so, really just thirty bucks a person. So it's the exact same. I don't know. What I mean, it's the here. exact same. On a personal some, level, but if the there, if so the yeah. uh, like if the like second place prizing is split between the three, it's totally just like just completely taking your money and running. If uh, you have to split a chase prime set between three people and you paid ninety dollars to get in, that would suck. All right. Uh, that's enough about the rock prizing. Uh, that's cool. I won't be able to compete just because I'm busy all weekend. Simeon, do you plan on or want to compete in the not, rock nationals? Not at this point. I'm undecided. Okay. Uh, if I can get like two people that are really excited to do teams, I'll think about it. At this point, especially with the regulations on sending in pictures and stuff, there's no way I'm doing singles. Uh there's sure. just not a team that I could come up with that I'm willing to pay thirty dollars and lose with, and the only teams that I could come up with would have to be like a situation uh, where I don't need a picture because I don't own the figures. So, yeah. maybe okay, teams, awesome. maybe teams, yeah. But hey man, get uh, get Sean and Charlie up all up in it, and then you're good. You're golden. Mm. All right. It's what their names were. I feel <laughs> bad if it wasn't Charles and Sean. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, it is. Okay. 
Okay, I got a good memory of somewhat. Next up, we're going to go ahead and talk about our uh, our quote-unquote games in the clicks off. No, excuse me. Pardon me. Bleep that out. The Critical Clicks Kilted Classic. Say that uh, five times fast. This last round was la- round three. Uh, I'm going to go over really quick the team I played round two. We didn't talk about it. I did Spider. Maybe I, maybe we did. I don't know. But really quickly, I had like five scientists. I had Ultra Humanite. I had Ensign Crusher. One with this team. Ensign Crusher was on the team. Just really quickly. Ensign Crusher was on my team. One with it. The way the tournament goes is when you win with something, it gets banned. And Ensign Crusher was on my team. Anyways, uh, then I had the Spider-Man at 145 from ABPI. Uh, and then a Cadmus Labs dude. So it gives him Battle Fury, Precision Strike. I perplex him up to high heaven. He's a 15 for, for like 5 or 15 for 7. He's 15 for 7 plus yeah, 3 each. With Flurry. And uh, then I, and I TK him and he, and he flurries and he reach. Reach full speed and has Giant Reach too. And I go bonk bonk and like kill something. Yeah. So played against Panther, and then I just went bonk, bonk, and Panther died. So Gauntlet Panther was like, just no problem. So like that was very simple. But um, once again, my wins were taken away by the fact that literally everybody that played a Red Skull chase also played a uh, uh, Ensign Crusher, which I won with and was not uh, was not banned. Um, it goes to show you that my wins don't matter. Uh, thank <laughs> they you. Never did. Thank you, PJ Owen, for that. No, they never do. No one cares about my wins or my successes in life. Uh, Simeon, what did you play? Uh, for oh, round two. I played cool. Double Witch Queen, one at 150 points, one at 100 points, and then Asuka at 40 points. So I, my team came in. Oh, wait. I also played the Mind Gem. Didn't really need to, but I did. Um, the whole premise behind my team was Witch King, Queen at 150 points has access to all standard speed powers. So by throwing a WWE character on there, I, of course, broke theme, but I threw a WWE character on there. And I basically could, I could nimble, I could slingshot. So the whole premise behind this team was uh, nimble increases her reach by one. Um, the other wish queen can double perplex me. I have a regular perplex on the 150. So I have like a plus three to stats, whatever stat I need. Mind gem gives me a plus one to attack and then free mind control. If I roll higher than a 10, but that didn't really matter. Um, so the premise behind this is I could nimble, sidestep, running shot, pulse wave, because she's got pulse wave with a 12, so I'd have a 13, like, 13 basically off the bat, because I have the mind gem equipped. Uh, I can slingshot the character however much damage I've done them, so it'd be 4, because that's what's printed. I could perplex that up, of course, if I needed to. Um, so, like, I, I basically had the option of having a 15 attack for four damage or five damage, uh, depending on if I wanted to like perplex up speed or range or whatever. I had a pretty crazy amount of reach and I could just slingshot someone back to the same witch queen and then make a second attack as a follow-up. I could slingshot them off of elevated because with slingshot, you can determine which direction the knockback goes. So I could just shoot them off elevated, shoot them into a wall for an additional two or one damage. I could also slingshot them back to the Witch Queen free attack because they're now adjacent to her and then slingshot them again another four or f- like two or four or whatever squares away and have Asuka do like submission hold or just punch the person and get like one of her tokens for KOing somebody. Um, it seemed like a really good idea. Also, Witch Queen can't have uh the opposing character can't increase their defense or attack values or damage values the only thing they can increase is range basically against you so seemed like a real good idea the only characters that i was afraid of going against were the chase black panthers the one from earth x or no, not from Earth X. The the Chase Black Panther. There's one in Earth X. Old uh, Venom Panther. Yeah, get me. the one from Secret Wars Battle World, of course, who has the gauntlet, and mm-hmm. then the one from ABPI, who is protected. They're both protected pulse wave. The one from Secret Wars Battle World is just capital protected pulse wave. He just can't be pulse wave. The other one is protected pulse wave for his like hindering trait, where he can't be targeted. And that's exactly what I went up against. Uh, I had an option at one point where I could have hyperson- I could have used hypersonic 
I could have had a 15 attack to his 19 with a prob on it. I could have just let him roll the super senses and seen if I got it or not. And instead, I was like, oh, I'm going to hold back one turn because I really don't want to lose my speed power if I miss because that's how she works. Mm. Um, I thought it was a real fun team. I played it wrong. I should have taken the chance. I normally would have taken the chance. I didn't, and it cost me. I didn't realize he had like a crazy reach with his outwits, and he just outwitted my all my good stuff and then proceeded to win. So that was round two. That's rough, buddy. Yeah. Uh, so round three, I was already in the loser's bracket, so I was, I'm was i always on nails. Um, so I lost my first game, uh, won my second game, and then round three, here we go. Uh, Cap. It was time for Cap to come out and play. Cap Resi, people were like, whoa, you didn't play Cap on your teams? And I'm like, no, because – just because. Leave me alone. Um, so finally, Cap Resi, it was time. We got – your boy, we have Lockjaw carrying people. We got Cap Resi. We got Yelena Belova Prime. You can take away defense powers for free. We got my girl's Quakes. My Quakes, Crystal. not Quake. What's her name? Crystal. There you go. <laughs> she Quakes, though. That's her thing is she, she Quakes. Does. She's a better Quaker than Quake. Anyways, two double Quakes. All right. And then uh, like shipping containers or whatever. So I could pick up a light object if I wanted to, which, which I did. It was cool. So. Whole team idea. Push the qu- uh, the crystals. I have three perplexes. I triple perplex down your defense. I say, uh, have Cap open it. If you have a different defense, top dial, and your highest top dial, uh, Cap can be a 12 for, he's 12 for three normally. And then if I want, if I can land in the spot with a light object on the, the especially since it's free to make one in the orange area, I can go ahead, give him one, and I can hit you a 12 for four, which is kind of the plan. And then I turn off your defense, whatever defense you have for the most of your dial, and then I let the crystals go quake and quake. My main worry was weapon H. I was seeing a lot of weapon H be talked about type of deal. So I was like, cap hits him right away. Then we turn off invulnerability, and then we go bop, bop, right? Like that's kind of, that's the plan. Um, the whole plan is like, if we can, we should be able to kill a tent pole. That was like the whole team. I'm going up, getting ready to play, going up against Chase Red Skull. I'm like, okay, it's a tent pole. I like this. Uh, the thing is, is uh, I didn't move a lot right away. I moved up, got the crystals pushed. I uh, had to move. Oh, I had to move up twice, right? I had to move up once to get into position. Uh, once again, because they s- still weren't within my like death range, quote unquote. Um, but what killed me was like dice rolls, and <laughs> like to, to me, it is it was dice rolls. I think I played it the best I could, but like what happened just sucked. So Red Skull hit a shape change. Um, he didn't use the Wesley, the Ensign Crusher to reroll his shape change, but it just goes to show you that, like, hey, I um, I won with that figure. That figure should have been banned. And the fact that they could use that combo, not cool. Not cool, Mr. <laughs> Bullen. I'm on to you. I'm on to you. The PJ Masks over there. I'm on to you, bro. I'm on to you. So anyways, whatever. Take away my wins. It's okay. It, I don't matter. So, uh, but he hits his leadership. Mind controls, he has to take a token off the person. The only person with the token at this point in time was Lockjaw. I had already, like, I pushed the crystals, I cleared the crystals, I got all of this done, right? And he kept trying for leaderships, never got them. Finally got one, gets one off, like, Lockjaw. I even perplexed up Lockjaw's defense. So he had to, like, roll seven or so. He had a lot of prob, whatever. Um, and Lockjaw crit hits a crystal and, like, kills her. So I'm, I'm instantly down one of my perplexes and one of my free attacks before i ever get to do my alpha Jeez. which hurts bad being instantly down like 50 mm-hmm. points all all that was free too really sucks so then i move up with lockjaw i only hit once with cap perplex down his defense right and then i missed by one with uh with crystal and i was like well my goose is cooked i turned off his impervious or yeah whatever and i'm like well my goose my goose is cooked i i failed the alpha i only hit one attack only dealt two damage done like I'm, I'm just like i'm done like period i i also had moriarty not moriarty geez good lord sherlock data he was pretty cool to mess with shouldn't focus data is pretty fun um i'm not gonna buy him like <laughs> star trek sucks but like i did play a lot of st- i did play a lot of star trek this tournament i did play two two whole star trek pieces so you guys can have that on me but anyways uh it sucks I me mean, dice don't go your way dice don't go your way missing by one is rough 
uh all this jazz and i was just like i, I had already like mentally clocked out once like crystal like the first crystal was gone and then i missed with the other crystal i was like i just can't beat this team there's no way and then i didn't i lost so yeah, it was pretty cool i needed a six one time <laughs> against red skull trying to get like some damage with it our attacks my opponent was still a good player we had a fun time it was like a fun game that's all that matters is that we're having fun but uh mr bowling i'm i'm watching you I, I hope his team was banned i hope the team that he won with was banned <laughs> Um, there was a lot of Red Skulls played. That's probably the weirdest thing, was like how many of the same figures I see get played each round, which is yeah. kind of a bummer. I was hoping to see more creative teams, but it's very obvious that people are... Workshopping with like inside their team. Helping each stuff. other out with team building. Which is... How I'll say it. I don't know why I didn't fine, expect that. But... Uh, mm -hmm. I, I guess I just yeah. like I've been out of the competitive for a while. This is how people build for tournaments. They uh, if they're on a team, they workshop with teams. They've got their uh, group chats, whatever. But yeah, seeing Red Skull after Red Skull after with like very little re like variation in between, it was just painfully obvious that people like were in group chats being like, "This is the figure to play. This is the stuff to play it with." Because, man, like, this tournament really matters in a grand scheme, and so you really need to make it to the next turn by playing what everyone else is playing. Um, so my round my round three, uh, I played... I figured I might lose, and so I wanted to go out playing something that I really enjoyed. So I played Asuka again, because she wasn't banned because I lost. I played her again. I played... Um, Macho Man Randy Savage. I played the starter Stone Cold Steve Austin and the starter Shawn Michaels. Uh, I played against Paris Gordon with his uh, Avengers kind of team. It was like uh, the Nick Fury that has the uh, Tradecraft tokens. It was Cap Resi, which is weird. It was the only the only figure that I had practiced against was Cap Resi against Calder. So uh, it was weird that that showed up. But uh, Ghost Rider carrying three people. Um, the uncommon uh, Iron Man from ABPI, the like uh, ghost in the shell kind of Iron Man or whatever. And so my, my whole plan was like... Just, just do what I normally do. Perplexes like d damage down if I can. Uh, get rid of his outwits and perplexes. Basically, try and keep Oscar alive till she can hit her click three, or like her th her three clicks in. She becomes an eighteen combat reflexes that can't be outwitted or targeted with range. So she's basically always a twenty. And then if I can KO somebody, she's always a twenty one from there on out. Um, it's a real fun thing to try and do. Uh, being able to look at the backs of cards. Which like on online, it's just a given that people can do that, but uh, means that Oscar always gets hits for four, even if people have no idea who she is or what she does. But I had a sweet opening attack. He moved up within my grand entrance range. He did not realize what grand entrance or anything like that was. He had pulled like the WWE rules up, but I guess not not realize that like I had that crazy reach. Turned out it didn't matter because. Uh, Macho Man missed, Asuka missed, and this was me going after the uh, Uncommon Iron Man. I figured Macho Man can hit him for three, Asuka can finish him, and then boom, Asuka's instantly got one of those tokens. He's instantly down 50 points. I had two probs on it, missed with both. Um, he missed uh. some breakaways. He... I don't think he actually did a whole lot that second turn. He charged, or not charged, he rammed with Ghost Rider. Uh, I had a 20 defense with both Shawn Michaels and with uh, Macho Man. And he rolled like a 10, so he like hit 22s. He needed an 8. Um, and he moved to a place where I wasn't able to prob it, so that was like good movement on him. Uh, Macho Man hit his Super Senses... Shawn Michaels just took like four damage right off the bat. Wasn't great for Shawn Michaels, but he wasn't going to do a whole lot anyhow. Um, my next turn was real bad. I moved Stone Cold up that first turn as well to outwit his outwit. And then my next turn, um, everyone was double tokened because I attempted to do attacks and stuff. And I finally did KO that Iron Man, but then Macho Man 
Macho Man hit the Iron Man with a free reversal attack. And then I had like an attack I could use. So I decided to go after his Nick Fury and I rolled a crit miss with everyone else double actioned. So there was no theme probbing it. And it just going like getting knocked off of click one with a WWE figure uh, from a crit miss is just like the worst possible thing. It's even worse than like when you colossal retaliate and you crit miss. It's like, this just shouldn't have happened. Like it, and it also, it just makes him so much worse because now he can be outwitted. He can be targeted from range, a uh, lot of stuff like that. So he just, uh, managed to get rid of the rest of my team fairly handily. Asuka, of course, got taken out with four damage from a perplex because, uh, why not outwit her super senses and perplex your damage to four when you know that's exactly what you need. Um, that's the state of game. So, I mean, that's how it goes. And then that's how, like, the rest of the team went out. It was like, how much damage do I need to do? I can do that if I perplex. And, you know, I burned through my uh, theme team probs way too quickly. Uh, So that was, like, my one real mistake in the game was double actioning some people that only had one action. And then they couldn't use their uh, special, like, attack power or whatever the next turn. And other than that, I, I had fun. It was a good game. It just didn't go in my favor. Dice rolls weren't the biggest issue, but um, it really would have paid if like mine were higher and his were lower. If we had swapped dice rolls, it would have been a much different game. But like that wasn't what it really came down to. Maybe a so. little more even. Yeah. Kind of your as, thoughts. And as soon as I saw someone that, with Mystics, yeah. I was like, ugh, guess I have to save that for last because there's like you know no invincible going on in WWE, so. Yeah, it was just bad. But uh, well, yeah. all right. Though that those were our final games, so let's just go ahead. There's there's no like one way to talk about it, but we genuinely did have fun in both of our games. Like despite the way it may have sounded, I, I had a good time in my game. They were some cool guys uh, who I played against, and then who was the our, um, what's the word for it? Spectator. So it was pretty fun. It was great. We have uh, final thoughts on the Fantastic Four. We didn't really do this for Just League Unlimited. Uh, because we normally do this when sealed events are happening and we're taking a different approach to our kind of set review. So we're just going to talk about what we kind of think they did right overall in the set. Maybe talk about some specific figures we feel uh, to be a little too good, too bad for the way they made them. So besides God doom and whoever else we talked about last week, I'm just going to go ahead and start off. I think it's cool when they can make a niche keyword uh, competitive to borderline competitive, and I think they did that with the scroll keyword. Yeah, I think and, with and the scroll, set, yeah, a single set, the scroll general, super scroll, kind of silver surfer, but like with those two figures. So, uh, number one, making the scroll team ability better that's huge, making the scroll general who's awesome, and then super scroll who's awesome. So, in a single set, they made uh, scrolls a super viably competitive team. So really quick, the scroll general, uh, when friendly character uses shape change and succeeds, the attacker can't choose a new target with the scroll keyword. Uh, then they just can't target anyone with scrolls, which is just awesome. So now you have an entire team of scrolls, you hit shape change, guess what? Can't target anyone on their team. Obviously, pulse wave gets around this, pulse wave gets around everything. But um, like besides pulse wave, if I hit my 50-50 shape change with the new awesome scrolls team ability, and I have normal shape change on dial or from, I don't know, a remaker ring or a symbiote maybe. Oh, oh it's so hard to get shape change nowadays. Like, uh, just scrolls is a competitively viable team, in my opinion. And I'm not a competitive player, but I, I think that's the way it is. Yeah. So and it's, in it's the cool. I like of... scrolls. And I like that they did that for scrolls, which is hilarious. Yeah. In the age of uh, no ID cards and like Jason Wingard being the only way to get Jason and like super friends being the only way to get something in off the map. Um, a lot of teams aren't going to be packing pulse wave as like a main force, yeah. like maybe as like a retaliation thing. Uh, also not like a ton of battle fury probably going on outside of like the Hulk teams or something. Um, mm-hmm. It won't get past like the, the free ping damage that widows do, but yeah, you give, no. you give a uh, good old, uh, scroll general here the remaker ring and you just get a poison widow right back so um yeah it's pretty solid a little shoving contest so what did you think 
what kind of stands out to you, Samin, in this set? Good, bad, otherwise. More final thoughts. I'll say we we all have a couple of thoughts. So the thing that I think is like really good is like the point values uh, across the board, like really low. So real easy to build some pretty decent teams. There's so many uh, Fantastic Four figures, like with the keyword, whether they're the main guys or not. Um, there's just a ton of them. And a lot of them, like the Uncommon Valeria is real solid on a Fantastic Four team. Uh, the Uncommon Reed Richards for 50 points is real solid. There's just like a lot of good synergy in like the small stuff that isn't competitive, but like on a casual night, if I run a 300 point fantastic four theme team, I'm probably going to do okay. Even if I'm going against like a super scroll or Mm -hmm. like a chase doom or something like that. I mean, not at 300 points, I won't do well, but um, if it's like a, I don't know what is, what, uh, what's that Latveria. Yeah, if it's a Latveria theme team, I might do okay. If it's just three hundred point doom, I'm just done. Yeah, but Latveria theme team is like actually kind of solid between the chases. That uh, same uncommon uh, Valerie, yeah, has <laughs> Latveria for whatever reason. I don't know, but it's cool. You know, and then yeah, obviously and Doctor the, Doomer, yeah, the solid. Doombot, the Doombot for fifteen points Doombot's is great awesome. filler. Yeah, and I mean, don't knock a ten for three for fifteen points. Uh, that's it for with five range and flight. Like that's <laughs> running shot. Solid. Yeah, deep flight, running shot, energy explosion. Doom bots are great. Uh, so, all right, my next sort of thing is going to be a minor gripe, and it is the whole dials get more complicated the higher up they go. Uh, we mentioned this with Kamala Khan having a very simple dial, uh, especially compared to the rare um, Franklin, who has a very complicated yeah. dial that's already had to be errata. So it works the <laughs> way you think it would work now. Um, but it didn't before. So like stuff like that. Right. So Gordon yeah, here, we should mention how he's 65 points and yeah, Franklin is alone, he, like point for point with what he does as a rare, everything from his rarity level and down, he is better point for point. He is 11 clicks long and just a complete like spit in the face of all of the, like the frightful four, all of like, I mean, and Franklin should be good, but for 60, I'm just, I'm just making a point for for 65 points points, less than all the frightful four, which are all mediocre dials, by the way. And they're definitely not 11 clicks long. (laughs) He has power cosmic his whole dial because of his one trait. Uh, He also has, uh, the whole pick a power thing uh, pick as his three power. And whatever he can take potentially three unavoidable damage for for doing that or maybe yeah. just one so he you does know? damage so himself but two. also he can just like running shot pulse wave somebody with a prob for 11 for four and that's yeah. gonna take most of the frightful four guys that are 75 points that's gonna yeah. just take them to like their last or second to last click Heck, with WWE, he could running shot, pulse wave, slingshot, and throw someone into a wall. Um, yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty Sorry, I, d- I didn't mean to um, go off track. Frankly, no, that's okay. just don't worry about it. Wait. Way too good for a rare, in my opinion. Then, if we compare him to another rare, which is Gorgon, it's just super vanilla, 20 points less. He's got charge, he's got some vulnerability, he's 11 for four, whatever. He's got no indom. And definitely doesn't have power cosmic, which you have to. Now it's on the card, but before you'd be like, "What's power cosmic even do? What does this team symbol mean?" Um, he just has a trait, Quake. But Gorgon uses it as if he occupied a square within three squares in line of fire. Like he, Gorgon here is a common at best in the complication like factor, right? He doesn't have any traits, at least like the Frightful Four all have two to you know one or two traits, right? Somewhat complicated, but like Gorgon just isn't complicated. He's only a rare, probably because his sculpt is slightly bigger. But like yeah. the uh, common invisible woman with the whole, you have to learn what the stop key phrase means. You have to figure out this whole oh, at the yeah. beginning of the game, switch for people. Like she's way more complicated. Two so traits, special damage. Like, yeah. Hopefully this Team is ability. the last time I ever like talk about the whole rarity equals complication because it doesn't, they make whatever figures they want complicated to however they want. You know? Yeah. It's just, that's just like the way it is. Cause like Miss Marvel is, Brain dead, easy to use. 
you know, same thing with like whatever, like Hulk, he moves up, he punches things, you know, I was like, whatever. It was not complicated, stuff like that. Um, but then there's also figures where it's like Super Scroll, who has a bunch of picket power, or there's title characters that are really complicated. So it just it doesn't matter. There's yeah. rares that are just as complicated as super rares. I, that's I'm gonna not talking about this, but like rarity does not mean anything to the how complicated or hard a figure is to figure out and learn. Said that like three years ago, I knew it was false then, and it's just so false now. But so even, go ahead, you're next. Yeah, even like the super rare prime, you'd think like that would be pretty. Like, yeah, you know, whatever. Uh, she has about the same difficulty in like figuring out what she does as Red Hulk. So she's got two traits, yeah. a special attack and a special damage. She's got the almost the same two traits as Red Hulk. Uh, she's got the circle of four one, and then one of hers is based around uh, retaliation. But uh, other than like the special attack and damage, like he's a common. She is a super rare prime. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, she's a great super rare prime for 40 points, but yeah. Um, uh, one thing I want to kind of mention that I think is an oversight that'll never be fixed. And it's annoying to me, the rare hydro man and rare sand man uh, have yeah. these mirror dials, which is cool. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with them all being 75, all the frightful four being 75 points, six clicks long, or whatever, close to six clicks long. I don't really care. Um, but I really I really take umbrage with this Hydro Man. So he's got Dolphin Symbol. Uh, he's got Charge, a special attack power that doesn't matter. He's got Impervious Shape Change on his like top click. 75 points, ends with Pulse Wave. Uh, Sandman has the exact same dial, except he's got Boot Symbol. They both have four range. They have the exact same stats, the exact same powers except for their special powers, are a little bit different. Sandman has Minions of Doom team ability for the same points. Hydro Man has no team ability. But what Hydro Man has that Sandman does not is the Indomitable symbol. So for the exact same points, I can have a character that can go two out of every three turns compared to a figure that has to clear every other turn or take damage for pushing. Uh, and sure, he can heal because of Minions of Doom, but like, let's be honest, an 11 for 3 with uh, Smoke Cloud trade it, like Smoke Cloud as a special power probably isn't, or it's also Smoke Cloud and Quake, that's what it is. Um, I don't think this guy is Quake, yeah, man. He's probably not KOing anyone, to be honest. Uh, maybe like later down dial where he's got Pulse Wave and Exploit, he's going to KO somebody, but Hydro Man gets to have a plus one defense when he's in water because of the dolphin symbol. And then he also gets to go twice in a row for the same points. Uh, did they just forget to put the little slash on Sandman, give him Indom? Did they think minions of doom was better than Indom or is like equal to Indom? Because honestly on this character, it is not, it is not worth not having Indom for minions of doom. I'd much rather have nothing like no team ability and Indom unless that team ability is power cosmic. And again, uh, for 10 points less, you get Franklin Richards, who's five clicks longer and can pick three powers. Sure. He takes damage, but he's also got a full dial of power cosmic and he's got a full dial of whatever powers he deems necessary to survive. So for that Franklin, he can reach this Sandman first for 10 points less and deal one, two, three, four. You can put them on click five. And if you want to slingshot them or knock them back into a wall, you can put them on the click six. If you somehow manage to knock them off of elevated, he just dies to one attack for the same amount of points. Seems pretty reasonable to have your rares like that. Yeah, I'll agree. I'll agree. Because, like, Sandman and Hydra Man are, you know, basically the same character, right? We could say Sand has the same effects as water and the whole it can get everywhere, blah, blah, blah. Like, sort of not really similar people. They've been, you know, primes and stuff of each other before. So, like, that's kind of a nod to them being basically the same dude. But making one clearly better than the other for the same points is a little rough. Um, and I don't even think... 
the frightful four on Sandman is that much better than the frightful four on Hydro Man. Uh, yeah, it's they just it's either ranged attack or close attack. So obviously, actually, probably Hydro Man's frightful four trait is better than Sandman's frightful four trait. Really, yeah, um, it helps you from range, which is probably more of a threat than close. Anyways, yeah. So yikes, big uh, big yikes there. Uh, next up, I want to talk about this is sort of a power creep thing. So stick with me here. Um, I'm going to be talking about Guardians of the Galaxy 053 Annihilus uh, oh, yeah. for 200 points. So I like this Annihilus. I like him when he came out. He has seven range, two bolts. One He's thing flight, no I, Yeah, the one thing I don't like about him that would be, be a problem nowadays is he had an old version of the, like starts with this object trait. He did. But you still yes. had to pay for that object. So it made him 208 yeah, points to make him infinitely right. better. So he doesn't have Power Cosmic or Indom at 200 points. So in Sealed, he was a really rough pull. And if you ever play Figures Only Golden, he uh, you're never going to play this guy. But uh, the Cosmic Control Rod is 8 points. It just gives him Power Cosmic. That's literally it. So instead, he's 208 points Power Cosmic. He's 9 clicks of life. He starts with two 11s, and then he goes down to 10, and then he's got four nines on his dial, which is really rough. Um, and then he also has a special damage power that lets people, uh, he can use Outwit, and then other characters can't use Power Cosmic, which is actually pretty cool, but he doesn't get that until click two. So you have to either push him or like hope you land on it type of deal. It's yeah. randomly in his dial. So I've played him multiple let's times compare... in big battles just to yeah. push him. And it's literally oh, totally. like spending I, I 200 to. points. It's like a golden age way of spending 200 points to get rid of Power Cosmic. But nowadays yeah. you've got you know, Black Widow, Professor Moriarty, Possessor, uh, Ultra Chase Thanos. You've got like a hundred different options to get rid of Power Cosmic or Quintessence now. Um, and now let's take a look at this new Annihilus who is, uh, let's just say, 33 points less technically if we're counting the Cosmic Control Rod. He is instead nine range. He's plus two to range. He's three targets, so he has an extra target. Uh, he actually has a 12 attack top dial, 12 attack on his bottom dial. Oh, actually, it never goes to a 10. Uh, it never goes to a 9. He's 12s and 11s the whole time. He has power cosmic, just straight up. And then he can heal him, uh, which is a power action, equal to the number of his negative energy. He gets a negative energy token every time he passes by the defense power, which is his whole invincible. It's not... It's not stop. It's just when it's revealed to give him a negative energy token. When it's revealed is when you pass by it. So he has four of those. Um, so if he stops right on click number eight, you can power to heal him for clicks. And it's only when they're first revealed. So you can't just keep stacking them. But so he has, he doesn't have regen necessarily, but he has like pseudo regen, which is cool. And he also has outwit, except he starts with it and he has it for his first three clicks. And then when he is attacked, any positive modifiers in the attacker's attack value become negative. When Annihilus attacks a single character, any positive modifiers on the target's defense value become negative. So if they have ESD, combat reflexes, phew, negative two. If yeah. they think they are going to um, like it, it flex up range combat expert to Annihilus, it's, yeah, it's amazing. So so I, I get it. This is six years difference. Six years difference, but 175 points, this dude is... 100 points better than the 208 point Annihilus, really. Yeah. Um, because when this guy he has some 17s, but he's more consistent with his defense values. Um, one more click of life on this 200 point guy, but like with just overall better attack powers, uh, doesn't start with running shot pulse wave. I think with triple target, running shot pen blast might be better. You know, just yell at me however you want. Um, but with nine range, it's awesome. So, like, goes to show you that they're constantly making better versions of characters within that same point value. Now, this is the next Annihilus we've gotten in six years. We have not gotten him since Guardians of the Galaxy. So I'm happy to get an Annihilus, but um, he's just, like, a, a million times better. So this just goes to show you that it gives you even more incentive to really not keep your Golden Age stuff. I do also like honestly. So oh, endless resurrection, yes. his trait endless resurrection is quite end. It's quite ended because uh, it definitely ends. after oh, you yes. do it, he once, has a set number. You probably you know, won't get to do it it's again. Over. Unless if it was actually it, like, literally on... regen, it would be better. Oddly yeah. enough, 
and um, I, I don't know why it wasn't like if they had just given him not given him the negative energy tokens and just it's because weird. the other thing is make uh, it more complicated and just be still worse than just regen yeah which is if he gets to me. if he gets pulse waved you don't get to stack those energy tokens so if he gets pulse waved yeah. for like four uh you get like one energy token i guess because you land on it no you, you get none you go right. right past both of them but yeah um yeah. Last thing I want to talk about is, and this is like another, it's just, I love how many Ghost Riders we got in this set. Um, mm. I really hate this mm. uncommon Ghost Riders 80 point line because, again, for like the similar amount of points, we've gotten multiple characters with stop clicks. We've gotten multiple characters with all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, Mr. Oz at 100 points had a mid dial stop click. This guy for 40 points has three clicks all three charge precision strike to two clicks of poison uh 18 toughness to two clicks of 17 toughness three clicks of damage that are all three and no damage power uh when he's given a move action after resolutions you remove an action token from him and then he can use stealth that's the shield beast hunters trait uh, a few other people have that the hellfire portals and Penance Stare, he doesn't get unless you play him at 80 points. He does have Fantastic Four and Mystics. If you play him at 80 points, he has nothing that guarantees that you'll actually get to use those. Like, if your opponent... And this is why I hate that opponents can look at the back of the card. I'm not going to get into that too much, but I can just be like, oh, you're playing him at 80 points? I've never once looked at this guy because I like hate casual play and I, I just want to destroy people so I'll look at the back of his card I'm like ah I'm going to hit him for 3 that'll put him on click 3 because of his toughness and then I'm going to psychic blast him for 5 and he's just off the board and I never had to deal with any of his special stuff and that's why like he straight up just should have had a stop click on click 4 because he gets yeah. phasing teleport when he uses it moves 4 squares or less after resolutions he may make a close attack he can combine that with his move action that gives him stealth until his next turn. So that would be real cool. Um, unless he gets Psychic Blasted on click 3 for like 3 damage. And then he just never gets to use any of that. Uh, or 4 damage and then he just gets KO'd. Uh, his Penance Stare also only 3 clicks of that. With his, He's got a 9, 12, 19, and 2 clicks of 19 with Impervious in his middle dial. And again, you can just get knocked right over that. I mean... This is how Golden Age figures were, where there was like no way to like guarantee that you landed on this other than hoping your opponent didn't know what that click did. So right. his Penance Stare is Energy Explosion Pulse Wave once per turn when Ghost Rider hits an opposing character that damaged a friendly character since your last turn. After resolutions, deal that opposing character penetrating damage equal to their action tokens. Pretty cool. I really like this version of Penance Stare. I really like this version of Ghost Rider. For 80 points, I would have accepted 100 points with a stop click on click 4. Uh, for 80 points, I don't care that he has the Fantastic Four or Mystic's team ability because I'm probably only going to deal 2 penetrating damage to somebody with uh, Invincible. Or maybe I'll just get Pulse Waved by that 65 point Franklin and I'll just go, you know, like they'll hit me to click three and then I'll just get pulse waved for four and I'll be on click seven or I'll get knocked back into a wall and I'll just die. And this figure was completely wasted on that. Um, so this isn't really a gripe about the figure. I really like the design of it. It's only an uncommon. I can't ask for a whole lot of power, but I'll probably never play him at 80 unless I have some way to guarantee that he stops on click four. And I don't. I have no way to guarantee that. So he'll be a 40-point piece for me as long as I have him. Absolutely. And then that is uh, that's the Fantastic Four set. It's all I want to talk about. It's the thing we want to talk about. Um, just really quick, a great thing. All the generics. I only pulled like one of each generic in my brick, which really peeved me off. But um, The scrolls are all cool. The Moloids, we haven't gotten them in so long, so they are cool. Uh, Punishers exist, and then the Doombots are like some of my favorite generics of all time. The Doombots are freaking awesome. So yeah. I love, I love that. So great, great That's what generics. I always say, like if, if you like generics, and you these are all generics we haven't gotten in so long, um, this is the set, man. Yeah. It's the set for you. 
I always say the the best reason to buy like a brick or case is if you really like the common, common, uncommon, and rare, or if you want like multiples of generics. And this set has four, like four generics that you can get. Uh, three that people probably will play with. Maybe you're just a Doom guy, so you just want Doom bots. Maybe you're potentially going to run like a Moloid Swarm thing. Um, it's very potential. Like Moloid Swarm is like a real optional like team that could probably win some pretty decent stuff with all the empower and whatever and then um what was the other one moloids punisher doom punisher. ah the scrolls yeah oh, having yeah, three yeah. generics uh it's like getting borg or playing buying the captain marvel movie set um except it's way easier to get scrolls in this set than to get them in captain marvel and you're paying less somehow I'm not really sure how the math works out there, but it definitely does because I did it. And uh, I've got a bunch of scroll infiltrators that have two rollouts and one of them's a 50, 50 and that's great for 20 points. All right. Before we move on to the page or uh, whatever community Tuesdays and all that stuff, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick Patreon shout out. We are giving away all my polls for my fantastic four brick. If you want to see that unboxing it is on our YouTube channel. I had a lot of fun filming it. And I hope you guys enjoy watching it. Uh, we did not pull a chase. We instead pulled a common prime, which is Black Leopard, which is super lame. So I bought some random boosters. I got the Punisher prime. So I'm going to add him to the first place prize. Uh, and then if we get even more than 100 bucks uh, in a separate booster, I got the Franklin chase. So if we get up to like 150 or something, we'll do Franklin number one, the primes number two. And whatever super rares were commons on commons. So uh super rares were Wolverine, Silk, and Super Scroll, though. So awesome super rares for yeah. second base. So that's cool. So uh we need still a hundred bucks to give away those primes, and then fifty, probably around fifty, I would say, maybe just shoot for thirty. One thirty, I'll I'll do Franklin. So yeah, if we get up to hundred, we need four more dollars on the Patreon to get up to hundred to give away. I'll do both those primes, even though they were separate boosters. And technically, I, I said I was only going to give away what was that brick. It was a really lame brick. Uh, so whatever. Um, that's just the way it be sometimes. That's what like sucks about mystery product. It's the way it is. So it was a lame brick. So I'm going to throw those in from the extra boosters I bought. And yeah, if we get up to one thirty, I'll just give away Franklin. Uh, and we have until the end so like this friday is the first or this saturday is the first of august i don't freaking know i think it's I think it's saturday so you guys have like five days to uh to get patreon either to 130 for franklin or just 100 and we'll give away both primes uh that's patreon a uh, quick reminder uh since i was talking about youtube check out thursday throwdown uh this last week uh you can watch that video if you want to uh, if, you, if you want to I'll i think it's it fun but uh definitely go to our social media on facebook twitter and the comment section of that video and discord to vote for next week this is what i'm really excited about because i am building out of the watchman set simian is building out of batman alpha Ooh, i'm yeah. excited because i get to play watchman i just really like watchman and the batman alpha set has really good batman figures in it as, as long as like the dynamic duo and all yeah. these other cool characters some of them so, can move their full speed and then punch yeah or move their wow. full speed uh, and shoot let's yeah shoot punch official key terms oh that wording is awful it's so bad it's so terrible <laughs> anyways um so yeah if you guys like those thursday throwdown videos check those out it's a tiebreaker me and simian tied four wins four wins for the carded era with no oreo dials so to see who wins this era we have to have a tiebreaker, and this is a tiebreaker. So if there ever has been a time to vote, now is the time to vote to see who wins, guys. So mm, what it's is awesome. Our, Obviously, our the Colossal Dr. Be... Manhattan is not allowed to be voted for. Like, it's right. ridiculous. Come on. Let's be real here. Is uh, our next like, era going to be uh, Golden Age? Like, our next golden era, I wouldn't. I, I consider Golden Age all of it, right? Uh, true, so I would yeah. say, what is this, Bronze Age? Like Oreo Asian up? Is that things. what people call I don't know. Oreo up, yeah. Let's do like so. There's like so much Oreo dial stuff. So I don't know if we should go normal cards. If that should be the age, I think that's probably going to be the age because then in 2016, oh, Oreo is normal. The, yeah, the new card yeah. system until Spider Man. So yeah, we're gonna go Oreo normal cards is what I think we'll do. We'll have that be the age. Sound good? Is that kind of what we'll call it? Yeah. We only do main sets, and there's like a million micro sets in Oreo with normal cards so 
those are all pretty much going to get skipped on, unless we need a tiebreaker round, pretty much. So, simplifies things. Go vote for Thursday Throwdown. Simeon's building out of Batman Alpha. I'm building out of Watchmen. Look at the Fast Forces for those sets when you vote. All right, moving on to the community section. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Community Tuesday's question. After years, the Fantastic Four releases tomorrow. What would be your perfect poll? Let's read three each. Simeon, you have it pulled up? Yeah. So Jeff Polyer on Facebook says, two answers. If playing in a sealed event, I'd realistically hope for 058 Super Scroll, 029 Claw, 016 Medusa, 025 X23, and 005 Doombot. And I'd play the first four as my team. The Doombot is just to add to my eventual army. So a little bit of super building out of the... Uh, what is that? That's the Frightful Four. And then... Nope, that's not the Frightful Four. I don't know what that is. Just Synergy. Super Scroll Claw Medusa X23. I don't know. Sounds good because Super Scroll and X23 is on there. Uh, then he says, if we're talking just opening a booster and having phenomenal luck, then I'd want God Emperor Doom, of course. Uh, 020 Things, 024 Hulk, 009 Spider-Man, and the 015 uh, Pace Pot Pete. Ooh, baby. I, I love Pace Pot Pete. He's my man. We have uh, superfan Christian Bogan on the Twitter saying, I'll go with the single booster. Commons being Moloid and Doombot. Uncommon being uh, Valerie Richards. And then the rare being Mole Man. Chase, very simple. Uh, God Emperor Doom. Is there any other choice? He says. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, that was like a, a given on most of these answers. Alex Morse says, my perfect pact would probably be God Doom, Wizard, Uncommon Ghost Rider, Trapster, and Thundra. A lot of love for uh, the common Trapster. Trapster, uh, baby. Almost as much as there was for God Doom. Not, not as much, but close. All right. Uh, next up, collectible. Most of what I want wasn't included, and the stuff I do want falls in the common on common range. So Hilly says he'll be happy with frightful four pieces. Yeah. Uh, breaking the mold a little bit. Jack Barber says rare surfer, prime punisher, mole man, and all the scroll I can eat. He also says any chase since I've never pulled one and I've been playing since Infinity Challenge. I don't oh, know wow. how. That is possible, but I, I was I feel sad. Bad. Yeah, it feels bad, man. Feels Some that's bad. like buff luck, dude. Yeah. Uh, all right. AD game. Last one on Twitter. I'm gonna read. AD games says all the intelligentsia editions for Modok, Hulk Super Rare, Ghost Rider Super Rare, and uh, the Ghost Rider Prime uh, would be just fine. But I only pulled a brick, so we'll see. So we really pulled a brick in his uh, in his brick. No, <laughs> just kidding. Open a booster. Only, a only bought a brick. Up. Yeah. Like, whoa, that's awesome. All right. Uh, last last on Facebook. On Facebook Boy. We'll, Boy. Go, we'll go with uh, Peter Marshfield, who says, Super Rare Scroll, always one of my favorite characters. All right, keeping it simple, stupid. I like it. All right, moving on. Let's go ahead and finish us off with a Jedi Legend Hero Clicks, a tip of the week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. Pulse wave, it's deadly, isn't it? But what if I told you you could do more damage and no reducers can stop it? That's right, that's how pulse wave works. Uh, if you can get to target a single opposing character, you do your printed damage. Hey ho, how neat is that? That's um that's certainly how pulse wave power is worded. So that's pretty cool. All right, Simeon, anything we want to say? Yeah, for uh, uh, we get gone. Unless it's one of the few characters left in a tournament yeah. that still have protected pulse wave, and That's it's right. literally the. I mean, I guess it was fair oh. enough to assume some people Simeon, were going to play Simeon pulse wave, but me and don't. Oh man, I already. I know it sucks. Uh, I know it sucks, man. I feel you, bro. Just wanted to pulse wave oh. slingshot someone into a wall. That's all I wanted. It's fine. It's fine. It's whatever. Anyhow, uh, you wanna... we are brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. There you, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day. You can pre-order that sweet $100 Galactus Big Boy Edition. Two swappable heads, several arms, at least two I've heard, multiple legs. Uh, he's a guy. He stands. He will give you a dial, at least maybe more. Um, hundred dollars for that guy. You can pre-order him. You can buy some of the singles from uh, Fantastic Four as long as they have them. They also, for some reason, put the uh, the 
Masters of Evil starter in the Fantastic Four uh, thing. So that's already sold out, but you can buy the individual figures if you just want the figures or if you want the campaign cards. So the sealed one is already sold out on CoolStuffInc.com. But you can find cool stuff in stock every day. CoolStuffInc.com. Please go dial 5, D-I-A-L 5, for 5% off. And like always, guys, happy trails. Thank you.